So we'll jump in the game here. Gonna be on Port Alexander. And we're gonna have our red Potos player in the bottom right hand corner. It's Duck Roar. As everyone knows that the sound a duck makes, so it very very clever name there. And in the top left hand corner, we have our blue Terran player. I'm gonna mess this name up, but I'm gonna say Andok. Andoch? And I don't know. Andok. We're gonna go over that for now unless he corrects me. Gonna go gas first, it looks like. Yeah, gas first. So this this is definitely indicates more of a mech play, but could also be some I don't know, Marauder cheese? I don't know. Duck Roar is gonna send out his scout. And and docked. Okay, we're gonna say and docked then. If that's right. Probe will scout from Duck Roar. Will not harass the SCV building the barracks. It's a classic. Double gas here for Duck Roar, added on at the same time, I believe, and uh, Andoct is going to send his SV across, just one gas, two on the gas, for him. On the other side, though, double gateway here for Duck Roar, so this indicates probably more aggressive start. If he's going to go for double gateway before the Cyber Core, before the expansion at all, and that's going to be scouted, though. So, full information available now for Andoc. Cybercore will be added on again before the expansion, so probably looking at an aggressive play. Terran, one of the best races at holding aggressive plays because of the ability to wall off. Uh, you know, make a hard wall and then still be able to, you know, obviously get out after that because of the spy devos being able to be raised. As well as the fact that you get bunkers, you get siege tanks. Cyclones are great at defending against air units. As I've discovered many a time by trying to proxy Tempest. It's very hard to do that against Cyclones. <laughs> I will say that. Factor being added on now. Again, no expansion here. For the Terran either. So both players looking to get aggressive on one base. Or perhaps Andok just saw the lack of an expansion. Was like, alright, I gotta I gotta make sure I'm not gonna die here. One Zealot moves out for Duck Roar. Trying to find this SCV, but... I think it's gone here. And one Reaper coming across here. And Doc gonna be e easily able to outrun these Zealots. Or the Reaper gonna turn, fire on him. Mmm, not gonna work. Unfortunately, Zealots are really good when they get in range. That I have also learned. <laughs> if, you, if you build charge and then A move, you win a lot of games. That's why I'm Diamond. Gonna get the factory now on the tech lab, it looks like. Which could be a Cyclone. It is gonna be a Cyclone. Marine coming from the barracks here. No add-on there as of yet. Both players waiting to expand until very late, but Duck Roar is now going to expand now. Now going to expand now, of course. All right. Well, he's going to add a uh, Stargate as well. Again, Cyclone at home here. Going to pop out momentarily. So should be able to easy, easily be able to be repelled. I don't know. Be casting for an hour. A couple hours. Speech isn't working as well here. The bunker is available. Has a couple rings in it, but uh, just gonna shade back down. Is it is Duck Roar? Could shade it, could have gotten past it, but didn't want to commit to the play all the way up. There isn't a second supply depot, so the hardball isn't able to be established yet. And the cycling gonna move out. The lock on will connect and take down that first adept. The second adept, though, gonna shade into the mirror line. Nope, gonna cancel at the last second. And this expansion should be completed here soon for Duck Roar. First gonna, uh, unit out of the Stargate is going to be the Oracle. So, Andok just opted to put his supply divas in a safe position here. Did probably don't want to put an SCV in the gap here to try and uh, complete the supply diva because he's very worried about a push. At that time, so he's going to. I'm going to make a bunker, play it safe. My Marine out here. A couple Cyclones going to move across the map now. Two Cyclones going to miss that Oracle, though, which is pretty crucial. Those Cyclones are what's going to stop that Oracle from coming across here, and I don't think there's going to be anything available. One more Cyclone coming out at home. Perhaps he can defend with that. On the other side of the Cyclones have started the attack, locked onto the Zealots. We'll take down one. We'll probably take down the second as well. And the Adept going to fall as well. Fortunately, the Oracle's got a lot of damage here. A couple kills already. 
Cyclone, the lock, Cyclone is going to lock on, but a bunch of these SCVs are caught in a bit of a rough spot. We'll save that mule. The expansion has gone down here, so... Does not have the orbital yet. Going to opt to make SCVs first. Now the pylon at the front of the natural expansion is going to go down as well. Denying this mining from the natural is pretty big too here. That's a lot of denied mining time. When you have... 27 is not the optimum saturation on a base. I can tell you that. So the cycle is going to go to work on this nexus. I believe Warp Gate was started. Yeah, Warp Gate was started super late. So a bit of a lapse in awareness there from Duck War. So now he's actually got to build all of his units right out of these gateways. Cannot warp them in. And this could be a nexus. If, if, if Endoc just takes this nexus, that's huge. It sets him back so far. Yeah, Duck War going to lose the nexus. It's a huge pickup here. Third cycle I'm going to, add, I'm going to come and join up with his buddies. And now Duck War is also a supply box. This is a really rough situation for him. Going to build some Hellions out of these factories. Yep, a couple Hellions on the way. Uh, looks like we're in an engineering bay here. We'll see if a second one's added on. And then there's a shift to bio, or he's going to add the armory and continue to go for mech plays. The other side, though, Void Ray and the Stalkers have popped out. And that'll force away the attack from the dock here. You can cancel the Prismatic Alignment. The prismatic Alignment actually slows down the Void Ray. But you can cancel it by just selecting unit and pressing escape. So then you get to full speed. You obviously lose the buff, but you get to full speed. Looks like he's going to lift the Orbital Command. He's really afraid of this attack. So Andox is going to play it safe and lift the Orbital Command. Actually, cancel the Orbital Command and then lift the Command Center. The Oracle is in on the other side, killing some SCVs. He's going to kill... Oh, the last one just survives with just a sliver of health here. Another factor being added on. At the front, the Hellions are rallied to its death. Couple Stalkers at the front here. Trying to get it, make their way up. Oh, great lock on though from the Cyclones. The Void Ray will go down. Good scan there to keep vision. That was very, very quick with his fingers there. On the other side, just some more bins, uh, some more Stalkers. The expansion is going up, but it's again it's halfway done. Six minutes. It's pretty bad. He has... On the other side, the Duck has denied the mining from the Natural. But being able to save that... The base, it's the base itself, the command center is huge. You don't have to, uh, you know, rebuild it, and obviously the resources, of course, is pretty big. So it's a big denial here. Going to be a big move out of stalkers from Duck Roar. Thirty to thirty-five workers count. Those oracles have gotten a lot of damage done. The things that have kept Duck Roar in this game have just been denying that mining from the natural and then getting killing all those SCVs with the oracles. Unfortunately, both armies are going to miss each other as the Cyclones and Hellions make their way across, while the Stalkers make their way across again, but on a slightly different path. So both armies will miss each other, and now the potential for damage from both sides. The Hellions do have AOE, so perhaps they'll be able they'll be able to kill probes a bit faster. The Orbital Command is building. SCV is still mining from the natural base. They decide the Cyclone's going to work on the Nexus. And, well, <laughs> the Natural gets killed again. Cyclone's continuing to work on those probes. Stalker's up on the high ground. We'll take care of those Hellions, though, and force them back. On the other side, of the Stalkers have been working on this Natural base. The Blink forward to try and stay with them. Oh, he's going to have to repair this. The SCV's coming in. He could save it. The SCV's the repair. The Blink again. Oh, he's got so many SCV's repairing it. We'll save it. That's a huge save on the Orbo Command. And the Cyclone and the Bunker on top will force these Stalkers back. Already gets one for free, and the SVs will come over to repair the supply depot. Cyclones on the other side. We'll take down almost all the Stalkers. Just one left. The lock-ons were great. Two left, excuse me. A couple more Blink in to help the brothers. Cyclone continue to charge forward. Now they're going to kite away. Ooh, one Cyclone. Oh my goodness, that's just one health left? Well, he's dead now, but it was just one health left for a second there. Cyclone can try and continue to kite, but the blink forward from these stalkers has been huge. And the last stalker will go down. Another Cyclone on one health. I don't know what the math is on that, but that's pretty crazy. Those stalker shots, just not quite enough. And on the other side, you got 25 probes mining for <laughs> Duck Roar on one base. He's got double Robo, but he really can't produce out of much of them. Probably make one Immortal, but that's about it. Twilight why Council did research blink earlier, and now he's going to start up that Nexus. Uh, so yeah, this is a pretty rough situation for our Protoss player, and Doc certainly poised to take this one. If he can just, well, based on his Cyclone play, I'm sure he can do it again. Uh, Skiing will come in to try and follow these Stalkers. The Cyclones and the Hellions are much faster than the Stalkers, and with Blink, they'll be able to buy some time, but I think we'll go down in the end. The Hellion will trade itself, but two Stalkers for one Hellion is a trade I'll take, certainly. And this natural base is going to be under fire again. Now there's four sentries. I don't know if those are great fighting units, but the four fields are going to come in here. Uh, not quite enough. Those Cyclones will get out, and the natural will go down. 
still mining on the other side. On the natural, because gas is being added on here. And the Cyclones will take out those assimilators on the other side. Looking to make their way up the ramp here, but there's five sentries. The force fields will come in. One Cyclone, now a second one going down on the top of the ramp. But that's it. That's basically all of his army. <laughs> He's got a couple... Got a couple sentries. The stock are being warped in now. The Cyclones are trying to try and take down these buildings on the low ground. Now we've pressed the 10 minute mark. Both players stuck on one or two bases the entire time. 26 probes still mining that mineral patch. Those mineral patches at the main base. Poor Duck Roar. Now the Immortals making their way down with the Stockers and a couple sentries. This one Immortal can do a lot though. Immortals some of those powerful units in low econ situations. Now the stock. Well, the Immortals got to kite away. The double lock on the Immortal, though, and that should go down. It's a huge lock on. Big pick off there, and some more warpings on the high ground. Just three stockers now to hold this push, though, and this should be the end, I'd imagine. Unless Duckwork coming with a huge save here. Some more mech units coming in to join the attack from Andok. Probes now pulled to try and fight, try and provide some front line for these stockers. They're going to take down one Cyclone. Some Marines there as well. One will fall. Second Cyclone goes down. A third Cyclone very low. They will go down and they've just been surrounded. Basically, terrible Zerglings are probes when they're pulled, but they get to surround and take down those Cyclones, which have been so very painful for Duck War this entire game. Uh, and a third CC being added on here. The army has just sat idly for the most part. Excuse me, the engineering bay. I don't believe there's an armory at all on the map. Putting those upgrades. And Doc has found himself in a very nice position. A couple Hellions moving around the map. One of my favorite units visually. Because I you know, they're race cars. Who doesn't like race cars? Siege tank as well being added on for some defense. A couple supply depots at the front, falling off. And Doc perhaps doesn't realize how great a position he is right now. I think an attack right now would probably just end the game, but he's going to play it safe. He knows he has an economy lead, so he's just going to take that advantage and, and roll with it. Yes, that pun was intended. Certainly, establishing a natural is Duck Roar's goal, but he hasn't been able to do it all game, so I can't imagine it's going to happen this time. But now the attack is coming to do for Andok. He's at 12 minutes, 45 seconds. Both players still sitting on one and two bases. Another warp in here of a stalker. And the attack's called off. Gonna wait for a couple more Hellions to be rallied out here. A couple siege tanks. Siege tanks with scans can certainly hit up this high ground. Does not have any flying units, I believe, Andok does, so won't be able to any way to get the high ground vision with uh, that way and use the siege tanks. But the probes have been pulled again. 43 to 20 workers, but Duckworth is pulling the probes. He wants to fight here and now. The stalker will fall though. And these probes, they're charging forward. Gonna catch one Hellion, two Hellions. The Siege Tank in the wrong position, not sieged up. One is on the ramp, though. We'll get some shots off. And the Cyclones continuing to cut away, doing a good job of it. But they can't leave this Siege Tank, otherwise it's gonna fall, and it will. The Immortal, again, such a strong unit in these small army situations, but... In the end, Andok is forced back here. He's moving this third command center out to try and get... Some more mining in, and at three bases to one, you definitely have an economy lead. But it looks like Duckworth is committing this attack. He's got three stalkers and immortal, three sentries, and a couple of probes. But those probes are, well, they're already dead. And now the fight will continue. Good force fields, though. Forced away a lot of the army from Andok. Now he's in a bit of a tough position. He's going to go forward with it. And the SUVs, they've been pulled as well. We'll try and go on the immortal, but the immortal's going to be able to cut it. Be able to just take this down pretty easily. Now the siege tank is sieged up on the other side though, and he's got a cyclone protecting him. The siege tank is going to be huge, and the last sentry goes down. The army has it thwarted, and Andok will take the victory.